All right, here we are Thursday, the last day of 2014 BPA Bull Expo. And here it is, our illustrious, and we have share the same barber, is with BJI, Bullet Journal International, and a few other hats as well, mm -hmm. is Keith Hamilton. So Keith, great to have you with us today. Oh, I'm great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. So in bowling, as we kind of bowl a little bit and lane change, we go through this transition. So it's kind of two of your big deals are a little in transition right now. So let's start with Bowler's Journal. Okay. What's going on with that? I, I, I see some great things happening. Yeah, Bowler's Journal, uh, you know, we're coming off the 100th anniversary, which was uh, just a resounding success. And what I mean by success is we hired a PR firm, Strike That, a PR person an expert in sports marketing, and she was just a gem. And she was able to line up the Wall Street Journal, Chicago Tribune, Chicago Sun-Times, scores of internet stories, and of course, as you probably saw it in CBS Morning Show on Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, there was a five-minute piece on, on Bowler's Journal. You know, it's funny, of course I'm in the advertising business, so I'm always gonna say advertising pays, and I believe that dearly. I believe PR pays. I believe that dearly. Well, I can tell you, the needle moved. We sold subscriptions to people we never would have reached, all because of the 100th anniversary and, and because of the PR efforts that we received. So it was, it was great to see. And now that momentum's carrying forward, and we're lucky because we hired, actually probably the best feature writer and secret in, in the business, in the bowling business, and that's uh, Jim Mark Mazzoni. Uh, he has joined the staff as our full-time editor. Uh, Bob Johnson stays on as our senior editor. And Mike Pinozo, who's actually uh, my business partner, he's kind of the Chicago hub and putting everything together. So Bowler's Journal might just have its finest staff in our 100-year history. And, and that's quite a statement when you've got Mort Luby and Jim Dressel. Yeah, and looking at Bowler's Journal that way, I guess Bob wants to live in Vegas now? Yeah, we have their country covered, we say. Bob's out west in Las Vegas, John Mark's out east in Florida, and but Mike's in the office in Chicago. So we got all the time zones covered, and mm -hmm. now we need a little international correspondent, and I'm sure there's something in the works there. Yeah, well, Keith Hale worked for us for years. Uh, finally, he re uh, retired, which he's entitled to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have a lot of what we call stringers or freelancers that not only domestically but internationally who keep us in the loop of what's going on. Yeah, because there's less and less print media available now, and it's good to see that you did get the spike after the 100th edition. Yeah, it's scary. The print media is scary. Uh, bowling this month went out of business, at least it's printed in November. Uh, that means Bowler's Journal is the only consumer magazine. There's only two trade magazines. One of us is uh, Bowling Center Management, which is what we own. Uh, and that's it. Yeah, and uh, it's scary. Yeah, we don't have these great lions of the industry that write for the major newspapers around the country anymore. Uh, I know Jim Goodwin still got the Bowling News Network and Events. and that's diminishing. I think it's like 12, 11, 12. Uh, I never understood. Uh, I understood the concept, but I never understood the execution to it. So I'm not even going to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> and. The, the number I can never remember, but how many magazines have actually survived a hundred years? Not many, right? Oh no, no. Uh, I think there's about 50. Yeah. And we are the longest-running sports magazine in America. Okay. The Sporting News was actually a, a tabloid, and plus now it's just online. Uh, but yeah, I mean we're, we're the oldest sports magazine. Uh, so many, even in bowling. When we looked at the history of all the bowling magazines that were here one time that are now out of business, I had no idea. I mean, there has to be like 20-some magazines that have existed and gone out of business, at least. Yeah, and about the only one that was newsstand was Bowler's Digest. Bowling Digest. Bowling Digest. Uh, out of Evanston, Illinois. That was done by a circulation genius named Norm Jacobs. He also, uh, you know, he owns Century Publishing, and he did Inside Sports. You remember that? It was the competition in Sports Illustrated back when. And of course they copied his swimsuit issue and everything like that. But uh, when, when we got in trouble, or not we, when he got in trouble when those, what do you call it, it was like the Ed McMahon 
sweepstakes, that type of stuff. When that took a hit, Boeing Digest took a hit. And he could no longer sustain the circulation that he needed. And when we took on U.S. Bowler for USBC, he, he just said, that's it, I'm done. Because he knew he couldn't compete against Luby when we do that for a living. So is there a BJI sports uh, swimsuit edition coming? Is that oh, I think it's pretty safe to say no. No. Uh, we did. Hey, Joan's <laughs> over here. She wants to volunteer. Yeah, I'm sure she does. <laughs> You know, we did a Women in Lido. I don't know if you remember it. Do you remember that? We did Women in Lido, I believe it was March 1989, uh, Las Vegas. And um, I think that's about it. That, that's, we'll we'll that leave was, that. That was it. What's a century? Yeah, yeah what's Next a century? 200 years, maybe right. there'll be another one. So the, the other major hat, the Bowling Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously it's moved out of St. Louis into Arlington, Texas, and a substation in Reno mm -hmm. so what's going on there well there's always a lot going on with the Hall of Fame it seems like when we left st. Louis the Hall of Fame has just gotten busier uh, the Board of Trustees have become busier working on the Hall of Fame and uh, of course in Arlington where we are now we built it from scratch that was very satisfying to be part of that team but we don't have a full-time executive director any longer. What we have is we have Eric Kearney, he's a managing director, but you know, he's a, he works for USBC. So it puts a lot more burden on the chairman and the vice chairman, because not only are we chairman of the board, but we really are involved in operations a little bit more than you would like to be. But that's what the job required. So, you know, I was vice chair for six years, uh, chairman for three years, so time to step down, time to let others lead. So as of August 1, uh, Bob Newdorf of Classic Products will be the new chairman of the museum. Heck, and I saw Bob the other day, and he mentioned us, I thought you were retiring, Bob. What, what's going on? Well, Bob defines retiring, reducing his hours from 80 hours a week to 40 hours a week. So, but, but you know, it's important, I, I told Bob, Stay smart. Keep that brain working. Don't ever stop working. Like Joan Romeo over here. Stay busy. If you stay busy and you keep your mind active, you keep living and living a smarter life. Like a shark. You gotta keep moving. Gotta keep moving. Well, now this year I got a little bit more time to spend in Reno at the museum looking at I know some of the purists, when the museum moved, they said, well, where are all the plaques? Where are all the paintings? And to go around that room and see all these names and faces, and it's just going down Bowling's memory lane. It was just really a nice experience. I'm very proud of the Satellite Museum. First of all, it's something that the Board of Trustees talked about for years. Wouldn't it be great if we had a satellite? Reno would be a great place for it, a satellite, but we just couldn't get it done. Reno stepped up. Reno with their $2 room tariff, call it tax, whatever you want to call it, we're able to have the dollars to put in this museum. And what I love about the satellite is it completely complements the one in Arlington. In other words, the one in Arlington was created with more retail and kids in mind. We didn't have room for the plaques because we went from 50,000 down to 13,000 of, of museum and exhibit space. So we have to go to database with the Hall of Fame. But you had these beautiful portraits and plaques sitting in storage. So when we worked with Reno to now take those beautiful portraits, those nice plaques, and hang them in Reno, and make artifacts, bring artifacts to light in Reno, it just made for a perfect compliment. So we have almost everything displayed right now. So we have an interactive museum in Arlington, one that is inviting for the kids, tells the history of bowling, and in Reno we have one for the bowler junkie, for the bowling junkie, someone who cares about bowling and knows the history more. So it's great. It's 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 really a great thing to have. Yeah, because I was going through with a little drink in hand, looking at all of the ABC, USBC plaques, thinking on the Let's Go Bowling side of how many of these guys have we actually had on the show? And I was shocked that over half of them have been at one time been on Let's Go Bowling. 
And I know when PBA had their top 50, I think when when it came out, it already had 38 or so already on the show. I was like, well, oh, we have made some penetration into this market. Oh, you and do I a great like job. 450 shows. That's maybe a thousand interviews. So that's we've had a lot of opportunity to get these people. It's on. an important part of the bowling media. What you do, what Lenny Nicholson does. You know, media today is not just print. No, it's social blogging. It's what you're doing. The the internet radio interviews, I call them. Uh, it's very important. It all adds up. You know, there's not one thing that's going to do it, but collectively. It all adds up. Yeah, because if we look behind us, we see IBMA. It's not BWA because there are not that many writers left. It's more media. Yeah, well, it, it, the thing that's kind of interesting, what annoys the pure journalists is the fact that there are more so-called writers coming in to the business by virtue of writing blogs, uh, self-published. And that makes the pure journalist a little upset, but the real that is the reality. Yeah, that's, that's just how it is. You define journalism how you wish. I don't call the bloggers journalists. I just call them writers. Yeah. And that's what they are. Yeah, cause most of the writers you see now are writing for USBC and PBA, putting out newsletters. Or and, not, though. And the blog, I mean, Jeff Riggles is as good a writer out there as any of the giants in the past. Yeah, Jeff is really good at getting the news and bringing it uh, forward, but he really does. Yeah. Kind of uh, bothers me a little bit that he scoops us sometimes. Yes, and like, uh, annoys he, me. How does he find this stuff? Well, we all have our friends in, in certain places. Yeah, unidentified sources. Cannot re re reveal who they might be. Yeah. So, Keith, great having you. Anything exciting you want to bring up at the last minute here? Or well, you know, exciting is I've been asked a lot, what am I going to do now that I'm no longer going to be chairing the museum? And the answer I give, I'm going to be concentrating my business for next year or two. Uh, with our editorial strength now, with John Mark joining and, and Bob and Mike Pinozo, I'm really going to take advantage of that with the magazine and do what I really enjoy doing and do well, I think, is the marketing and really take Bowler's Journal to a, a next level. Because not only is it a good business, but it's really important for the industry. I mean, I feel that Bowler's Journal is more necessary now than ever, given the lack of print, given the lack of coverage going on in bowling. So, yeah. So what, how can what, people subscribe to Bowler? Well, we, we, we'll float anywhere between 16 and 18,000. No, how can they subscribe? Get it up to 20,000 now. Yeah, I would love to. It's www, real easy, bowlersjournal.com. And, of course, we have all the subscription buttons there. Yeah, and once you do the print, then you can go on and do the online. And Yeah, we do have a, an online magazine, which is actually terrific. But, you know, it's really interesting because the online magazine, it just doesn't have the traction of print. Everybody says you need to be online, you need to be online. Okay, so we develop and spend a lot of money on this fantastic product, this interactive product, and it just doesn't carry the traction yet. But you have to keep it going because we know one day that that's where it's going to go. Yeah, absolutely. So great having you All with right. us today. Thank I'm, you for having we'll me. Keep seeing you. Okay. Bye-bye.